Welcome to the final episode of the Community Podcast, what we've themed the grand finale. Well, if you do not have any idea of who comes up in the grand finale, the star tougher, the star remains at the end. And speaking of stars, today I'm privileged to host the CEO and founder of Sipsos Africa, but also the very first host of the community podcast. Well, if you haven't known who that is yet now, this is a perfect time to pause, go back to any of our social media platforms at Civ South Africa, look for the community podcast episode one, season one, and listen to this amazing person introduce themselves. And if that's not enough, listen to all the episodes up to the one we are at today. So, this morning I'm privileged to host Jacqueline Asimwe. Hi, Jackie. How Hi, are you? Antonio. I feel like there needed to be a drum roll, <laughs> camera lights, action. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> I love you this. Built I love it this. Up. You built it yes, up. Yes, I love this. I love this. So, Jackie, yeah. the community yeah. podcast. Mm-hmm. What happens? Once upon a time. How yeah. much time do you yeah. have? So, I, I think I wrote about this in an article that I did for the East Africa Philanthropy Network. The idea for the podcast was actually first planted in my mind by the person who was working as our comms person then, Mr. Eshban Kwesiga. And I, I, I had heard of podcasts, but I, I didn't think mm. <laughs> that mm. we could pull mm. it off. Yeah. And especially because he was insisting, Safe Source needs to do one, you need to do it. And I was like, man, it's such hard work. Mm. Uh, because I have been, you know, I, I, I then started listening to podcasts and thinking mm. it's usually one person that does season after season after season, Sipsos was young but growing. I just didn't think I had the energy, the time, the bandwidth. Like, what do you even talk about? Mm. And so I shelved the idea more because I didn't think I was ready. I didn't think we were ready collectively as Sipsos. Mm. But as as Providence would have it, you know how it is when someone plants a thing and you think you've discarded it, but you mm. don't know that it is actually taking root and mm. taking its time mm. to build, right? Yeah. To build. So... COVID happens to us. We are on lockdown. This one random day, I stay in Nadia Estate. Mm. I went to visit a neighbor of mine and her daughter, Shari, who was our first editor, was was at home with her mom. And we started talking about what Shari's interests were. And she was into film and storytelling. And we ventured again into the conversation about podcasts. And I thought... Maybe, maybe not. So I left it there. But again, it was another seed to say, in case you think about it, there's also actually someone who could possibly help you. Mm Because we're in lockdown. Mm -hmm. Movement restrictions, you can't walk around, you can't do anything. So so that was happening on that side. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing, and the reason we even called it community, was because that's what COVID did. It literally impacted the global community, mm. and then all the way down to, you know, our, our small communities. And I thought, given that, so so that was happening, the very adverse impacts of okay. COVID. Okay. okay. But at the same time, when our president, during his addresses to the nation during that time, would often end with reading out people that were giving to the effort. Mm. Mm. to mm. support, uphold, push back against COVID mm. and was reading names of people who were giving. And I thought to myself, there might be something here, mm. right? Mm. Prior, just prior to, to COVID, we had started venturing out with our camera and with our first uh, seat holder of the philanthropy work, Nelson Gashagaza, walking onto the streets of Kampala. Um, and that's where, you know, Martin Gara joined and Alan walking out into the streets and asking everyday people, what is philanthropy? What do you think it is? Mm. Uh, There's a a segment of videos that we did where people were asked, what is community to you? And why is it important? So I think it was all these things stringing together. And like Mm. I said, you don't know how it stays in your psyche somewhere. Mm. And so that's literally how it came together. Because Mm. in Africa, Mm. and I don't think just in Africa, I think for generosity... 
the seedbed is community. Yes. The yeah. seedbed of generosity is community. And in Africa, that's why we talk about Ubuntu. I am because you are, because we are. And that talks about not just the people, but the community in which you live, the animals, the plants, the, the environment mm. is part of who I am. And mm. I am because they are, they are because I am. So that that is what community is. And mm. that is community that was impacted. Mm. And so it was a, a play on both generosity being a you know rather community being a seedbed of generosity mm. but also how do you also tell stories of generosity that are embedded mm. in community wow. and so that's how it ha- you know that's how it started yeah. and i i pitched the idea i went back to my neighbor spoke to shari and said would you help me do this would you help me edit mm. and she offered her services mm. and it was great because literally we were neighbors <laughs> didn't mm. have to go mm. far didn't mm. violate any covid mm. rules mm. um but also had to figure out how to get to people yes. so it was yeah. yeah so really that's 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 how it started that's where it started wow 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 that's a master class on how to start a, a podcast yeah so you get into season one and i remember uh you know you're making uh different uh calls making uh, for those that haven't listened into season one this is a perfect time again to go back and just listen in but you i, I believe that there's a task around who is going to be on this yeah. podcast why are they going to be on the podcast why on the community podcast so your thoughts around how you came up with who would be on the podcast at a time like you know the lockdown and and uh, the pandemic around so how did you think about who should be on this podcast and maybe our listeners should know why those people were chosen to to be on that at that time so part of the thing that i was doing was observing how covid was impacting community okay remember that at that time there were issues ab- around education because mm-hmm. schools had to stop yes and then schools were then also figuring out slowly how to continue education in some way say, shape or form mm. uh, so i thought to myself let's let's talk about how covid is impacting what education looks like now and or might look like and or needs to change okay. so i thought who else better to speak about this than solomon king so he i strung him in as well as goretti una i'm forgetting her name dr goretti who who is um part of really the regional educational learning initiative so i spoke to those the other thing that was happening the mamas around nssf and was it a responsive fund yes. because only essential workers were going to work many people had to stop their jobs mm. uh organizations were struggling to keep paying people salary mm. so suddenly workers were saying but hey mm. we save can nssf give us part of our money because we're struggling mm. yes government had worked out a food relief system of sorts but it didn't reach everybody so you know workers were struggling therefore the community of workers was impacted mm. so i thought at that time who might speak to these issues and that's when i reached for um dr fiona mpanga mm. who is a labor rights lawyer and i don't morrison rakakamba who at the time was thinking of filing a case yes in the courts to say can we can nssf work for workers mm. right mm. um the other issues was around how technology everybody was on well those that could access it mm were on zoom so how was community being disrupted upended changed mm. by this thing we call technology um i had a conversation with brian um kagoro mm. to say and if we look at africa you know as 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 a nation as as a community of 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 africans how is covid impacting us what are we learning because that time i think there were conversations around vaccines and access to vaccines and that whole thing again of your black why aren't you even dying <laughs> people sadly wishing us dead uh but you know those those issues around is there justice is there injustice and and how do we address these things how do we confront these things about how repeatedly african communities are relegated as least and last so it was really more around what what i was seeing and hearing in terms of community one of the ones that i remember 
and I don't even remember how I heard about her, was a photographer mm. that was taking photos of how the sex work community mm. was pulling resources together to support their own. Because yes, while relief aid was coming um, from the government, suddenly the local the leaders at local level were acting as gatekeepers yes. in terms of who could access it or not. Yes. And the assumption, of course, that sex workers, refugees, you know, there are people that we other in community mm. and therefore constrain their access mm. to resources. And so she was interested and started taking pictures about how the sex work community was feeding itself, mm. right? And mm. and supporting their their health, nutrition and, and well being during mm. this very tight time. And so I asked her to come and speak. So it was really what I was observing, what I was hearing, and then asking um, guests to come and speak to those kinds of things. Wow, wow. So for those that have listened in to the very first seasons of the podcast, Bathing in Crisis stands out mm-hmm. as a unique theme. Uh, in, in, in three or less minutes, a masterclass on what it means to bath <laughs> in crisis, because I feel like that stood out and can, you know, get us to understand more even beyond starting a podcast Mm. or what a podcast is. Mm. What did it feel like to, you know, birth in crisis and interact with uh, different leaders and uh, uh, communities that were actually uh, thinking around what they ought to do Mm -hmm. to birth or to rethink uh, or think of new ways of doing things at the time? So even as you ask that question, the word that has come to mind, community. Yes. Because... Sivsos had done a wellness retreat for leaders okay. and there was a particular cohort that kept meeting okay. and we said even if we can't and previously of course we had been meeting face to face and we said even if we can't meet face to face let's still continue meeting online mm. and it was in one of those online meetings mm. when we were asking each other how are you doing and how is it going and what are you that they started telling story after story of things the way they were recalibrating to mm. still meet community need mm. and, and keep the work going. Mm. And, and I thought, yes, this is also something we started in crisis because, mm. again, it was very easy to assume and, and such a global shakeup. I'm sure people first retreated mm. and, and for some it was like, this is over, we are done. Let's just wait for the Lord to come and take us home or whatever, <laughs> our ancestors to come and take us. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm sure there were those that were locked in paralysis mm. and you can understand it, that initial shock, that initial what's happening, mm. that initial fear mm. and then emerging out of that fear to say, no, we can, we can still do something. Mm. Because this this project called the Earth <laughs> mm. has to keep going somehow, yeah. has to keep working for us, yeah. and so bathing in crisis really was a celebration of that. Mm. That even despite this, the, the shocks in mm. and within community, mm. that people were still emerging from that mm. to continue work that supported communities to thrive. Wow, wow. So if I would, if I would uh, you know, theme the next part of the, pod, of, of the uh, podcast that we're talking about now is that was then and this is now, yeah. you know? So we start from that place and then we see that around episode four, you know, Jacqueline Asimwe says, Sivsos, here you are. And we see different uh, hosts coming in from uh, around season four up to today. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. privileged to host season 11 yes, yes, because yes. after that, you, you let the, the podcast take a unique turn. What, what inspired that? So I think two things. One, having done three seasons okay. and you know that we host a, or rather we hold quarterly review meetings yes. at Civsource. Yes. And I felt like I had tried to explain what it takes one, to think of a theme, mm. to think of a guest, to write to that guest. And some people say no, some people say not on my life, some people then to figure out in COVID times how to get to the person. Wow. And there's a time or two we had to borrow a pickup in order to take ourselves to the home of, the, you know, <laughs> wow. just figuring out how wow. do you keep this going. Yes. Um, and I, I, I thought to myself that I was, we didn't, I, I I didn't know how to enable the team appreciate what it actually takes mm. to 
put a podcast together and keep it going week upon week upon week. Mm. But we have somehow. Mm. And so that was going on. How mm. do I enable the team appreciate what it takes? Mm. But at the same time, I thought just because others have done it where, like I said, usually mm. it's one podcast person mm. that does season after season after season. Mm. And I thought to myself, does it have to be that way? Mm. Because mm. Mm, Maybe not. Mm. Maybe there's a different way to do it. Yeah. And that's how, you know, we opened it up to others of the team to host it. And it was more like, go host it and see what it's like. But mm. also host it with a community that you have access to, influence over, are part of. So that's how Malcolm did mm. Rotary because he's part of Rotary. He's mm. part of a community that does generosity all day, every day. Mm. So we said, you're a Rotary member. You'll have access to them go and talk about Rotary and generosity in Uganda. Kathy, who is absolutely passionate about persons with disability, mm. he said we hardly hear stories mm. of generosity with and among and by persons mm. with disability. Mm. You are connected to that community. How about you lead that season telling those stories? Alan, who was overseeing our leadership work and had access to all these leaders mm. who are leading different enterprises, different things, you know, so that's how we we split it also. Mm. Um, the other ways were what, what issues are contemporary? What issues are philanthropy globally, locally thinking about? That's how we did the, and linked with, uh, and did the conversation around climate justice, yes. right? And philanthropy. Yes. Yes. So it's, I've, I've loved the way it has evolved. And I think, hopefully, <laughs> we've created a podcast where we see it as, it's our thing. It's yeah. not the CEO going yes. and speaking every day, you know, <laughs> the whole time. But no, yeah. it's, it's our thing. And, and I hope it has given people the experience of, and this is what it takes mm. to think through the questions, to contact the guest, to set it up, to listen to edit after edit after edit, mm. to come up with a, a you know, a, a conversation at the beginning. It was just... And I, and I hope that's, that that has been the experience of yeah. those that have hosted these conversations, that they've experienced what it's like. And I hope they've experienced even just joy in having conversations with a whole, with so many people whose stories, whose voices we probably would never have heard. Mm. Mm. Because again, I think originally, in fact, when Eshman had told me about the podcast, we had thought we'll pitch it high level, right? Mm. Let's have... I don't know the Dangotes they hey. uh, but but when you think community, yes, mm. they indeed are part of our community. Mm. But I think the beauty of community is also to say, and whose stories are not yet told, mm. and how do we tell them, mm. and how do we enable the team to tell these stories? Yeah. Wow, very interesting. So just two more questions, Jackie. The, you've you've just themed the next part of the conversation. You know, the untold stories. You know, mm -hmm. how do we tap into? I know that. A lot of our listeners have had uh, a lot of the word philanthropy. Mm. We at Sipsos, we are trying to, you know, uh, redefine it and we, yes, use the word philanthropy, but speak more on generosity, on giving. If it is, if it was my first time to you know, tune into community podcast and then to hear the word philanthropy, what what in how would you sum that up for our listeners? And and maybe point to African philanthropy and the work mm. that uh, we are doing at Save Source Africa around that? So, like you said, we did attempt to break it down mm. because their language matters. And I think yes. that is a thing that we have learned and worked with as Save Source Africa. Language can exclude. Yes. And I think calling our everyday generosity philanthropy suddenly put a marker, a, a guardrail. Mm. Because when we hit the streets of Kampala asking our Ugandans philanthropists, what is philanthropy? Mm. One, people fumbled with the word. Those who knew it thought, no, it's only rich, mostly white people that are philanthropists. No, we are not. And so it was more how do we break it down into something that everyday people can see that they give. So in a sense, how can language be an enabler of people seeing their true identity? Mm. And that's what we've hopefully tried to do mm. with and through the community podcast. Mm. And with our other 
because podcasts, I mean, rather, community is not the only way we mm. tell these stories. Mm. It is part of the way we tell the stories. And so whether it is the stories that we upload on our website, whether it is the volumes of giving during the time of COVID that we did, we truly, truly try to paint the picture that generosity happens all day, every day by ordinary people. Mm. However ordinary is described. Mm. And so it should not be thought of as something that is alien to us, something mm. that is done to us, mm. but something that we are part of. And, we th and it makes us thrive and it has enabled African communities to exist over time, over space, over all kinds of um, shocks and injustices that have happened on this continent that people still give. Mm. Everyday people still give. And so I think the other thing for us is really the political, mm, <laughs> the, mm, poli the, the yeah. very political and ideological intention mm. to tell a different story about Africa because we are in the business of narrative shaping mm. and community has been part of that tool mm. to shape the narrative mm. that African giving is valued. Mm. It has a voice. It mm. has a space at the table. Mm. If you don't want to give us space at the table, it's okay. We shall create our table. Mm. But we shall speak about, talk about, celebrate, research, honor African generosity. Wow, wow, wow. So if you're in Kampala, you just have to move to a restock book, booklets anywhere near you and purchase one of two uh, publications or even both publications by Sipsos Africa are Generous Spirit, which explores the different symbols and expressions of generosity across Uganda and the book on African proverbs, because is it African if there's no proverb attached to it? I do not know. So Jackie, any parting shots, just one or two things that you'd want to share with our listeners either about community, about podcast, about philanthropy, or a word from your heart to our listeners about giving and generosity broadly? My parting shot, I think it begins, or rather ends where we began, mm. community, mm. is the heartbeat of generosity. And I I think even through our podcast, we haven't even begun to touch a, a tenth, a mm. hundredth mm. of all the beautiful stories that there are to tell about generosity across this continent. And so I hope that we shall continue to tell these stories, to celebrate these stories, to celebrate how community has held us, how Ubuntu has guided us as we do generosity. Wow, wow, wow. So we, we end our recap, we end season 11 with an interesting story of what the start was like. I hope you've enjoyed your journey with me throughout the entire season 11. Well, if this was your first episode, find out, find out more about the community at any of our social media platforms, on any of our social media platforms at Sipsos Africa. Go back to the start and dig, dig deep into the wealth of stories on African giving. It's been a pleasure hosting you, Jackie. Thank you so much for giving of your time. To my be pleasure, part of my this. pleasure. Have a great day. Stay tuned for season 12.